Hi, I'm talking today. I think this is my first video that's actually like about books. They're all about books, but like we're gonna discuss a book and we're discussing a book because as you can probably tell by the title of the video, I recently DNF'd Wicked. And I think it warrants discussion that I DNF'd Wicked because I very, very rarely DNF books. I think I can count on my fingers how many books I've DNF'd. This book now holds a special place in the darkest pits of my heart. It's not enjoyable. It's not enlightening. I really don't know what purpose this book serves other than to inflate the author's ego and that is harsh and I may cut that but I tried so hard. I worked on this book for over two months and then things just kept happening in it where I said no I'm done. I'm done. This is gross. I don't like it which is a shame and I guess I should preface by saying I love the musical <laughs> and this is very different from the musical but I've known that I knew that before going in that it was going to be very very different I've had people who've seen the musical and who have read the book be like oh yeah they're nothing alike and tell me that the book is much darker and I mean it is but once again I'm saying that that darkness and that grittiness that he brings to this book serves no purpose. It's really disappointing because look there's a map and everything. I was so on board. He uses like quotes to back himself up like oh look how learned he is and I love quotes but I'm like he writes this whole letter in the beginning about like what he's trying to do with it. Um, and just the examination of good and evil and what makes someone or something good and what makes something or someone evil and is it internal or is it external and all this thing. He did not achieve that. And you can tell by the note in the beginning, he full-heartedly, his whole chest, he believes that he achieved that. No. No. <laughs> This whole book is just kind of sexist and racist and gross. There's so much going on where I think he was like, oh, that's good because you can examine that for like good and evil. But he never brings that commentary forward. He's just showing you crappy stuff. And half the time his stance on it is clear and I feel it's wrong. <laughs> Or it feels clear, at least within the context of this book. So yeah, my first major issue, I'm looking down because I do have notes. I uh, write notes whenever I read a book because I also have a bookstagram. It's under the same name, feeling underscore my shelf. If you have not found me through that, which I think is unlikely, but maybe um, go check that out. But I review books over there in depth. I write them out. And so in every time I read a book, I have in my Google Docs, just a doc that I just take notes in while I read and then I go back and I smush them all together into something that resembles a review. Um, so I have my notes from while I was reading and I have a lot. I have a lot more than I normally do and they're not good. None of them are good because this book is not good. <laughs> and this is, this was the first note I rearranged to like kind of give this structure to my argument. There's not going to be much structure. This is probably going to be like a big rant on my part, but I did rearrange my notes to try and make it like similar things together. And I remember this note being the very first note in my document and it heavily gives off the energy that the writing did not achieve what the author originally envisioned for this work. That was the very first note I wrote. I don't remember at what point I wrote it but see that's how far in I got. I was so close to the end but that had to but I had a lot of notes that had to have been pretty early on that I was like ooh, something's not going right here. This is not doing and delivering 
what he said it was going to. So there's that. He does a better job. Um, what's his name even? Gregory McGuire does a better job exploring the characters' sex lives than the nature of good and evil. It's just, I, I, I feel like I get what he was going for. Um, I, and it's just a huge miss. If he did not have the crutch of using beloved characters, I think this book would have gone nowhere. I don't think it would have gotten a musical. I don't think it would have gotten anything if it wasn't a character that everybody knew. Characters that everybody knew. And I feel like he just kind of coasted on that and rode the coattails of The Wizard of Oz without really adding anything valuable to it. I really love classics. I really enjoy a society novel from like the early 1900s, late 1800s. They're so fun. They do examine really fun aspects of society. And this was basically that, but in a fantasy world, um, which is a fun new little twist on it, but it's not the most impressive thing I ever read. So he, I feel like he's using a tried and true story mechanism, story genre, but making it fantasy. And it's just very not impressive because he's not delivering the deep philosophical stuff you get with a lot of those kinds of classics. Um, but as we discussed, I think he thinks he is um, when he's just being gross with it instead. Or at least he's not delivering anything that you couldn't get from those classics. So once again, it's really unoriginal and uninspired. A lot of it seems to be, oh, woman sexuality bad, which we will get to. Um, and like, oh, society puts constraints on us. Like, duh. So it's just very unoriginal. He's not bringing anything to it with his fantasy elements. And even the characters he's choosing are not original. So it's just like frustrating in that respect. But I could get behind it, you know, we all love to read the same kind of things over and over again. So that's like not, I could have put up with it if those were the only issues. It's just a poor use of fantasy overall. He's kind of just shoving the fantasy in wherever he can get it, making every little thing weird because that's really all he has going for him. That's really all that's new is any kind of new lore he can add to the Wizard of Oz universe beyond everything that he's just straight up taken. And so that gets old really quick too, when they're just throwing out nonsense and every little thing is magic and every, like it, it and this is a problem that I never expected to have and I never expected to hear. And I actually heard other people talking about it recently and I was like, oh my gosh, that's one of the issues I'm having with this. And that leads us into the next thing, which is basically forcing the story along I feel like a lot of characters made really out of character decisions in order to move the story along. The biggest being I was promised a strong female character and was not delivered one. But we'll get to that because first we are going into a sidebar of yuck because this book is racist. I firmly believe that. But I discovered something about the musical which I love wow pondering that and that is that die bar of yuck the musical is also kind of racist not in itself but the way it is produced because fiero is clearly black in the book so why does the musical go so far out of its way to admit to cast white men or at least non-black men. The only, I looked this up, the only time a black man played Fiero on Broadway was when Tay Diggs filled in for another performer for just like a short period. Like he was never even like fully like, ah, we hired this Fiero. It was like, oh, he's just filling in. The real Fiero is coming back. And yes, in the story, Oz does have like a really clear racial structure, which if a lot of the extra yuck on top didn't happen, wasn't going on. I feel like we could do some really fun, like allegorical dissection and discussion of their established 
you know, racial structure, but there was too much egg. Mm -mm, too much egg. Not acceptable. But I would argue that it is even more icky and gross and like suspicious that whoever is in charge of the Broadway casting seems to be like explicitly avoiding black fieros. Like the man is black making black. What, why, what, hmm? Ah! And so we're back to the book and not the musical. It's racist, we're transitioning slightly, but we're still in the race section because it's also sexist and weird. That's what we're getting into next. The exoticism in this book Like, having a different racial or ethnic identity in this book, like, is portrayed as, like, almost a forbidden sexiness. It's gross. It, it's just unacceptable. And a lot of the book has to do with, like, and, and it shouldn't because why? But a lot of the book has to do with, like, eroticism and sexuality and, 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 do we really need all that in good and evil? Like I can get with how much our society discusses um, sex and sexuality that you would want to put that in um, a discussion of what makes something wicked and what makes something good, but not to this extent. This just gave me the yuck. The exoticism is really heavy. Once again, it's one of those things where he just does it. Maguire just does it and then like doesn't put it in a light for it to be discussed. So that moves us into his portrayal of sex and his inherent sexism. <sighs> okay, we're not getting there. I gotta control myself because I immediately want to skip to the overall portrayal of Elphaba. But first I would like to say that overall and beyond Elphaba, which is the name of the Wicked Witch of the West in the book, he naturally depicts the corruption of women with heavily sexual connotations, which is like the ultimate eye roll. We are set up to be like, oh, the wizard swept in, he's doing something hinky. He is a bad ruling power who needs to be taken out. And it, it is almost subtle, but it's definitely framed that way because obviously the, there are uprisings later and whatever. And the seduction of the young girls to his side, Elphaba, the Wicked Witch, who is not the Wicked Witch yet, Galinda, the Good Witch, who is not the Good Witch yet, and uh, Alphaba's little sister, the Wicked Witch of the East, who is not that Wicked Witch yet, um, Nessa Rose, are being like seduced to his side and it is portrayed as like making them have sexual fantasies and making them horny. And that's like the first time, oh my gosh, they were modest young women before and now they're having feelings? Oh, gross. That is n <laughs> I'm not gonna sit here and unpack how wrong and weird and like behind that is. This book did come out in the 90s, but still, because like the musical's still around, so people are still reading this. So I feel like it should be said that not all books age well and this one should be left in the dust. It should be left behind. It's gross. I don't like it. <laughs> so that's one weird sexist thing that is like, what? That's like this big pivotal moment in the book and you're doing that with it? Two, they have literally had in this world, in this thing, he copies so much from our world, takes our social structures, takes that. And it's like, okay, you could have done really great things with that. You're just being weird. And one of the things that he does is they have had in this book, matriarchal rule for hundreds of years. It gets passed down from queen to queen to queen. I may, maybe even thousands of years, I don't know. Yet he still somehow manages to push the narrative of male rule is best. God. 
I forget what character said it now. I was not very specific in my notes. But one character like straight up goes on about like, oh, women can't roll. It's better for a man to roll and ha he has a firmer hand and he's more clever. Whatever. Even if we even if we wanted to have a commentary on that. Even if we were discussing good and evil and uh, we wanted to bring gender into it and discuss how that uh, plays an impact on societal views. That just doesn't make sense to have in the story. It's just bad writing. Like, <laughs> because where did that come from? They wouldn't even have a position. They wouldn't even have the background and the understanding, the base knowledge to make that kind of argument because they've never had a male ruler. And they weren't even being like, oh, he'll probably be better because men are just better. It was like, oh, no, you know, men are better at that. Like, no, they don't. <laughs> the wizard just showed up like five years ago. I don't know what. Not good. So from that weird, sexist, general stuff, we are moving into um, creating, like he is like f forcibly creating the failure of a strong female character because it would have been so easy to write Elphaba as a strong female character. That is fully what I was expecting going in. And, and then using the strength that she shows as a woman to discuss good versus bad and how society perceives good versus bad, that would have been great. That would have been so good. And instead, but it was just, just not what it gets. <laughs> like, the Wicked Witch in herself, in The Wizard of Oz, you could even argue just straight up she alone in the original work is a strong female character. Because she's so intimately tied to her sister. Why does she do anything she does in that? Well, she's wicked and she wants to. All right. And she's mourning her sister. She's trying to get those shoes back because they belong to her dead sister. You took them off her sister's corpse. And yeah, she's evil. So then, of course, how does she approach it? Not the best way. <laughs> but you could, there's, there's grounds for being like, okay, even in that original work, is she wrong? Probably. Trying to kill a little girl, I think. Um... <laughs> But she is a strong female character. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. I'm not married to it, but there's that thought there. But the way he just comes in and completely, the way, the way freaking Gregory Maguire comes in and just completely destroys any possibility of that. He, she, in the original, she is tied so intimately to her sister. And Instead, he takes her background and makes it entirely about the treatment of her father. So, like, he gives her daddy issues. She never got the love she wanted from him. Boo hoo. And her love for a man. And I say love like this because there's no, like, Fierro is the love interest. The black man who Broadway makes very white for no reason. And he's the prince of some foreign tribe. Once again, not even foreign tribe, just like rural. It's still within Oz. So, but oh, it's so different. And they're basically barbarians. That's kind of hot. Gross. But there's no like actual love between them. It's like a thousand percent lust. So there's that weird exoticism, eroticism thing going on again. And then as soon as, spoiler alert, I'll give you a couple seconds. He dies. Oh, then she's so madly in love with him that she goes out of her mind. She just loses it with grief. She doesn't talk for years. I I was so sick of this book. <laughs> and I kept powering through and I don't know why I did that. Like, that is some of the dumbest character development I've ever... Mm, it's just, like, it doesn't make sense. 
Alphaba has really never cared about anybody. She would love love from her father. Um, she gets kind of twisted up in the beginning. Um, everybody pays more attention to her sister than her, so that's an issue there. Oh, that's another thing. We're we're not only gonna like make her story heavily dependent on men, but we're also going to be like, and actually, <laughs> she had issues with her sister. Well, duh, people have issues with each other, but she doesn't seem to crave the love of her sister like she does men if that makes sense so yeah gross all around uh i've been ranting for a while now and i've lost the thread of it <laughs> uh, uh, i think the point was that it is just nonsensical and dumb that she is so disconnected from so many people for so long and then she has sex with a guy and then oh she was so in love with him she's gonna go insane now gross also at some point this is in my notes i have in quotes women are weaker word for word apparently alphaba said this in the book alphaba i put i'm gonna puke this book sucks and that should have been the time when I stopped reading but it was not I kept reading on I stopped taking notes for a while after that but because it was just like oh, I don't like this I don't want to be here I want to be done I don't like this but then and here is almost the final straw I kept for a little bit I pushed through after this after she goes crazy the man she was sleeping with that she's suddenly so in love with once he's dead uh, actually had a wife and family back in his tribe and she goes to try and like apologize to them and they just don't want to hear it and it, and it is not even like oh screw you for taking our husband it's like no they straight up don't want to hear it and I could do a whole thesis a whole thesis on the wife and how she is portrayed. We're getting back into that exoticism and sexism. It's gross. I did not even take any notes, but I can remember it all. That's probably why I didn't take any notes because I was just fuming the whole time. Um, but she's not even like, get out of here. She's like, oh, you can say, I just don't want to hear it. Oh yeah, <laughs> my husband did what? No, don't tell me. But like, they know he's dead. And he had three children with this woman before he died in Emerald City. Um, two boys and a girl. We're really heavily going on the boys will be boys with the two boys. But once again, I'm not going full ick on that because that's something that I feel like if they had, if he had written it properly, the whole book, not just that portion, but if he had written the whole book properly, we could have really had some great discussion and examination of that, but it just didn't happen. It just got lost in the overall ick of the book. So putting the two boys aside, my like straw that broke the camel's back, but very slowly. So he placed it and then I took a few more steps and then I stumbled and then it was done. Um, was the daughter, there were two sons and a daughter and the daughter is 10. She is 10. And once again, the exoticism comes into play, but all, and the sexism and just being gross overall. He, Gregory Maguire, seemingly goes out of his way to describe her, a 10 year old girl, as mature for her age, almost directly before she starts getting sexually harassed and assaulted. I, I, <laughs> I, I very heavily gives off excusing that behavior um, from a narrative perspective and not a let's discuss it from perspective, a straight up this is excused because should she be running around without a shirt? I don't know if it went that far, but it, it, it was gross. It was gross that he wrote it. Then he continues to have her take her top off at different times. And he tries to explain it as like some part of her like journey. You know, she's 10, she's hitting puberty. One, 
10 year olds aren't really hitting puberty. Like some of them are. I know a girl who got her period at nine, but for the most part, 10 year olds are children. Let them be. And even if you get your period at nine, you're still a child. Let me say that. But I'm, I'm, she, mm, mm, mm. Number one, number two, please. If part of your journey to womanhood was you felt the need to take your shirt off a lot, let me know. I'd love to, I'd love to get a peek into your psyche, non-judgmentally. But my point to that is, I don't know anybody who's done that. That seems like this man just wanted this 10 year old to take her shirt off a lot in this book. And it, and it puts her in precarious situations. Why is she doing it? I don't know. 10 year olds can learn after the first time that they almost get caught with their shirt off to not take their shirt off. And as I said, this girl is also dark skinned. So it does definitely feed into the eroticism of other cultures and ethnicities. He does ooh, such a remarkable job of still making whiteness and maleness the norm in this fantasy setting that has been ruled by a matriarch for years. So I hated it and it's like really like sexist, racist, anti-religion book. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's all. That's what I got to say. And it wasn't good. It was not enjoyable. It was a chore to get through. And it seemed to be advocating just no just no just no don't don't read it you like the musical i love the musical go watch the musical and then maybe write their casting director about getting a black fiero but outside of that you don't need to read the book you don't i think it aged so so poorly i don't even know if it would have been appropriate for the time the 90s that seems a little late to be saying some of that stuff. But I was like two, so what do I know? Leave it in the leave, leave, leave it in the garbage bin. Thanks for watching. Have mm -hmm. <laughs> you made it this far? Thank you for listening to my rant. It was not a good book.